In the late 18th century, a young anthropologist named Emma was sent on a research expedition to study the life and practices of different local tribes. One specific tribe that piqued her interest was the Chickasaws. Upon arrival, Emma discovered that the Chickasaw warriors had great observance and kin belief in life after death, and they had developed a variety of efficient ways to defend themselves from both local and foreign invaders. Hi guys welcome back to White History. In this video we will look at, why you wouldn't survive as the Chickasaw tribes men. Relax and enjoy the video. Who are the Chickasaw Nation? The Chickasaw are an indigenous people of the southeastern woodlands, United States. Their traditional territory was in northern Mississippi, northwestern and northern Alabama, western Tennessee and southwestern Kentucky. Their language is classified as a member of the Muscogan language family. In the present day, they are organized as the federally recognized Chickasaw Nation. Chickasaw people have a migration story in which they moved from a land west of the Mississippi River to reach present-day northeast Mississippi, northwest Alabama, and into Lawrence County, Tennessee. They had interaction with French, English, and Spanish colonists during the colonial period. The United States considered the Chickasaw one of the five civilized tribes of the Southeast, as they adopted numerous practices of European Americans. Resisting European American settlers encroaching on their territory, they were forced by the US government to sell their traditional lands in the 1832 Treaty of Pontotoc Creek and move to Indian Territory, Oklahoma, during the era of Indian removal in the 1830s. Most of their descendants remain as residents of what is now Oklahoma. The Chickasaw Nation in Oklahoma is the 13th largest federally recognized tribe in the United States. Its members are related to the Choctaw and share a common history with them. The Chickasaw were divided into two groups. The Amosic Cha, Chopped Hickory, and the Inchoka, Leeper, Worn Outhouse, Though the characteristics of these groups in relation to Chickasaw villages, clans, and house groups is uncertain. They traditionally followed a kinship system of matrilineal descent, in which inheritance and descent are traced through the maternal line. Children are considered born into the mother's family and clan, and gain their social status from her. Women controlled most property and hereditary leadership in the tribe passed through the maternal line. Origin of the Tribal Nation The origin of the Chickasaw is uncertain. 20th century scholars, such as the archaeologist Patricia Galloway, theorize that the Chickasaw and Choctaw split into distinct peoples in the 17th century from the remains of plaque mine culture and other groups whose ancestors had lived in the lower Mississippi Valley for thousands of years. When Europeans first encountered them, the Chickasaw were living in villages in what is now northeastern Mississippi. The Chickasaw are believed to have migrated into Mississippi from the west, as their oral history attests. They and the Choctaw were once one people and migrated from west of the Mississippi River into present-day Mississippi in prehistoric times. The Chickasaw and Choctaw split along the way. The Mississippian ideological interaction sphere spanned the eastern woodlands. The Mississippian cultures emerged from previous mound-building societies by 880 CE. They built complex, dense villages supporting a stratified society, with centers throughout the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys and their tributaries. In the 15th century, proto-Chickasaw people left the Tombigbee Valley after the collapse of the Moundville chiefdom. They settled into the Upper Yazoo and Pearl River valleys in present-day Mississippi. Historian Errol Gibson and anthropologist John R. Swanton believed the Chickasaw Old Fields were in Madison County, Alabama. Religion. The Chickasaws do not have a tradition of a time when they were without belief in a supreme being, whom we call, sitting or dwelling above, also called Inki Abu, Father Above, under Christian influence. There were ancient beliefs in a multitude of celestial powers. There were four, beloved things, above, the clouds, the sun, the clear sky and, he that lives in the clear sky. It was believed that ILI lived above the clouds and on earth with, unpolluted, people. He is the sole creator of warmth, light and all animal and vegetable life. 
The Chickasaws worship Eli, in smoke and cloud, believing him to reside above the clouds and in the element of the holy fire. Lightning and thunder were called Hiloha, Hiloha thunder, and its rumbling noise R-O-W-A-H. When it rained, thundered and strong winds blew for a long time. The beloved or holy people were thought to be at war above the clouds. Many Chickasaw used to fire off their guns, pointed at the sky, at such times. This was to show that the warriors were not afraid to die so that they could aid the holy people. Fire was very much respected by our ancestors. Trees were deadened and later used to keep our annual holy fire burning. It was unlawful, and considered the work of evil spirits, to extinguish even the cooking fire with water. Chickasaw Wars and Conflicts the Chickasaw Wars were fought in the first half of the 18th century between the Chickasaw allied with the British against the French and their allies the Choctaws and Illinois Confederation. The province of Louisiana extended from Illinois to New Orleans, and the French fought to secure their communications along the Mississippi River. The Chickasaw, dwelling in northern Mississippi and western Tennessee, lay across the French path. Much to the eventual advantage of the British and the later United States, the Chickasaw successfully held their ground. The wars came to an end only with the French cession of New France to the British in 1763 according to terms of the Treaty of Paris. The governor of Louisiana and founder of New Orleans, Jean-Baptiste Le Moyne de Bienville determined to stop Chickasaw trade with the British. In 1721 he was able to incite the Choctaw who began to raid Chickasaw villages, and to ambush pack trains along the trader's path leading to Charleston, South Carolina. In response, the Chickasaw regrouped their villages more tightly for defense, and cemented relations with their British source of guns by establishing a settlement at Savannah Town, South Carolina, in 1723. They blocked French traffic on the Mississippi River by occupying Chickasaw Bluff near present-day Memphis, and bargained for peace with the Choctaw. Bienville himself was recalled to France in 1724. On and off over the following years, the French successfully reignited the Indian conflict. The Choctaw pursued their familiar hit-and-run tactics. Ambushing hunting parties, killing traders' horses, devastating croplands after using superior numbers to drive the Chickasaw into their forts, and killing peace emissaries. Illini and Iroquois occasionally pitched in from the north as well. This war of attrition effectively wore the Chickasaw down, reaching a crisis level in the late 1730s and especially the early 1740s. After a lapse due to strife within the Choctaw, the bloody harassment resumed in the 1750s. The Chickasaw remained obstinate, their situation forcing them to adhere even more closely to the British. Thanks for watching, do like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section.